All right, ladies and gentlemen, today is the day we finally start tackling this R32. We are giving away this car in $3,000 cash, but the car will obviously be clean and running and well built by the time somebody wins it. It's a 45 day giveaway, so we've got quite the turnaround. I think you guys will be surprised with how good this car will look today alone. This obviously is just the very, very beginning. I'm wanting to see how good the body looks, and I know this car does look really good because I've seen it before it was all dusty and abandoned. By the time you guys are watching this video, the motor will likely already be in. But today we're gonna put my detailing skills to the test. I really don't know what the car needs under all of this dusty mess. And so we've got a wide variety of Griot's Garage products that I'm gonna be able to try out and use today. It is definitely a mess over here and I'm very sorry about that. I'm actually about to get some like benches finally over here and get some cabinets because <laughs> I need it desperately. But I also have a new power washer that I'm gonna go ahead and use. I'm pretty sure I've set it up correctly. <laughs> so <laughs> to be completely honest, I think this car is gonna look a million times better just by washing it. But we're gonna go the extra mile and do a full detail on this thing. We're gonna have this paint looking pristine or at least as good as it possibly can. I'm sure it has some paint chips like I see here. We've got some paint chips here, got some paint chips there, but you know, I, I don't think that this car's gonna be bad underneath all of this. Hopefully that's not paint. Ah, uh, yeah, it's paint or drywall work. Uh oh, that's gonna be fun. Um, I'm gonna wash the car with just water first. I gotta spray it off. Soap will take all of this, but like, I really just need to just get as much dust off as possible. After that, I'm gonna use a couple different products. I'm real. I'm only focusing on the paint today, so the wheels I don't care about. I've got new wheels, new tires, suspension, all that kind of stuff. So we're just focusing on the paint. All right, I've never used this guy before but it's the only one that fits that new unit right now. Need to get another little adapter so I can have a swivel again, but let's just go ahead and start. I should probably turn it on. <laughs> now we're just gonna wash it off. Yeah, I think we got some like drywall or paint splatters, so that's gonna be interesting to get off. So I'm seeing a lot of just like scrapes and dents. A lot of these can come out through a good, some good detailing. So water only. My assessment is it's not awful. It's also not great and it's gonna take a while in some parts. Like I said, there's some paint chips. This fender is easily buffable and repairable. The, uh, the paint's not bad, but we do have uh, this little obstacle right here. Aside from that, the body of the car is good. It's straight, it's got regular scratches, and it already looks 100 times better than it did, which isn't saying too much. Now, we're gonna go ahead and get the soap and let the uh, surface prep sit on it for a little bit, and that should get a lot of the other nasties off that we don't want. This is the wash version of this. It's got a cool dual foam technology that I can show you guys as I'm washing, but it'll start bubbling up on like old waxes or dirt stuff that I couldn't get. So I'll dilute this with a little bit of water, probably finish up this whole bottle for this thing and let it rip. Best part, I always gotta take a picture. Now what I'm going to do is nothing. So this soap, what I'm using right here in that canister, it's actually doing all the work by itself. So it's also very, very aggressive and uh, shouldn't be used for every wash. So this, as you can tell, it's clumping up in certain areas. They call it a dual foam technology. And what that's doing is it's starting to eat away a lot of the waxes and all of the old crap that's been on this paint for a long time. I will probably wash this entire thing without using my hands at all, just power washer. You can see it clumping up in these little areas, eating something. While that's doing its work, and before I do the second coat of it, I'm gonna use another Griot's product. And this stuff is uh, the tits, I don't know. Like, is that okay to say? It's amazing. Mixing it with this, I'm just gonna have this engine cleaner kind of sitting here. This is gonna eat up a lot of those nasty dirts, and uh, it's gonna loosen everything up so that whenever I come back through and power wash all of this, most of it should all come off.
told you guys it would look good after just a wash. Everything's looking okay. It's looking a very like satin finish just because it's just been old. It needs a good polished back in the garage goes for the restore. So here we go. We're gonna get going on the important process. I don't ever show the claying process because you don't ever usually see a difference, but what it's gonna do is get a lot of the impurities and dirt out of the clear coats. Um, 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 not prosthetic, no, aesthetic, no. Freaking this type of clay. By the way, this is very abrasive to the paint, so you have to polish after you clay. This is not what, this, it should not sound like this. <laughs> this should never be that loud. <laughs> this is the toughest, most challenging detail I've ever done. But you know what? When it's done, this car's gonna be incredible. You can hear it a lot less now. So I'm gonna start focusing on a little sm on smaller areas, do the car one piece at a time. The car will probably look clean when it's done, but the clear coat or the paint, whatever I have left, is not gonna look great. Okay, claying stage is over. This is probably the one time, the one exception you'll ever actually see a difference after claying. Usually claying is only in the feel. You know, you can feel it with the microfiber whenever you brush back over it to wipe it off, but we actually have gotten pretty much every single one of those splatters off just from that synthetic clay. And uh, the paint is not the worst I've ever seen, but it's very swirly. I now have sort of an empty canvas. Now that I've gotten all of the nasty stuff off, I can now pretty much just go ham and work on it. This is gonna be a very aggressive detail. Basically, it started to oxidize, or you can still, you can still hear that it's, uh, it's bad. So we're gonna hit it with some really aggressive stuff. Also, I do wanna mention that fiberglass detailing is much different than detailing on metal. Fiberglass heats up differently and uh, it absorbs and just treats whatever you're using much differently. I'm not sure how much of this is going to come out of the fiberglass. It probably will after a polish, but I'm also not sure if I, like, I might just get a regular, like an actual metal rear hatch. So I'm gonna be using the Griot's G15. It's a five inch with some wool paired with their fast correcting cream. So these two working together are going to do the most abrasive job. Wool is a quick cutting pad. It's not too dangerous. It's not dangerous or whatever. But uh, if you don't know what you're doing, I don't ever recommend starting off with wool. I need to get some good before and afters because this, this is a Cinderella story. This is gonna be so much cooler of a comeback than any other car that I've detailed. Cooler than this one, cooler than this one, cooler than this one, cooler than that one. This is going to be nuts. That's with me, that's like 10 seconds of work right there. That's amazing. I don't want this video to seem like one long infomercial, but yes, I am using all of Griot's products, and yes, I am a Griot's ambassador. The fact that one company has enough products to tackle a detail like this speaks volumes to me. I've worked with a lot of detailing companies before. A lot of companies out there have a lot of good solutions for very particular things, but like, Griot's has something for everything, and that's awesome to me. I don't want it to seem like an infomercial, but like, really? I want to show you guys that the products kind of speak for themselves. All their liquid car care products are also made right here in the USA by their own full-time chemists. USA made baby. Like they don't steal anybody else's product and change the smell. They do it all in-house. And it's a family-owned company. So let's keep going and uh, let's see how shiny we can make this boy.
already so reflective. I've never had this much fun, <laughs> uh, trouble with clear coat. But uh, this, the first stage is like super important because you have to use your, your utmost knowledge. Like you're, you have to dive into the deepest realms of your detailing knowledge to be able to tackle stuff like this. And I'm um, just what I'm showing you a little bit. So like this is what happens. I'll do, uh, I'll do a part of the car with the wool and it'll shine up, it'll clean up. But then again, I'll have to go back and do stuff like this. So I'm gonna do one more. That's pretty impressive, guys. Like, that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. My biggest, I think the biggest flex was the roof. I don't know if I got a good shot of it before, but um, it literally is almost flawless. You can see the little tape spots that I have all around the car right now. I'm gonna go back through with my little bitty, little bitty boy. I've got some wool pads for my little G8, my little guy right here. And I'm gonna go back through and hit the smaller spots with all the little tape on it. The thing really is about detailing them, the hardest part about stuff like this is hitting it with that first hardest, grindiest, most abrasive pad and first coat of polish. After the first round of polish, it's honestly downhill from there. It gets way easier because all you're doing is step by step getting little scratches out of the paint and just making it a little more shiny. Yeah, the, the, this car is turning out <laughs> incredible. You'll have no idea how much work this bumper took. Oh, it's almost done too. Look at this. I'm trying not to miss a single detail of this. This little lip that juts out into the skyline portion, it's so close to being perfect. I mean, this paint is so good, but you still have little, little spots like that where you don't realize how difficult a detail like this is until you spend so much time and most of the paint looks like this, but then you still have a little clear coat stuff like this. But thankfully, this car's gonna still have clear coat, so. It'll be all good. Okay, guys, I am about four hours in of polishing and the first polish is done. I was going to move on to a uh, lesser correcting compound, but I'm not. I'm actually going to use the fast correcting cream again, but instead of with a wool pad, I'm going to use a white pad. And I'm going to use that throughout the entire paint. The reason I'm gonna do that is because now I no longer need to dig into the clear coat and just basically <laughs> do a factory reset. Now I need to basically hit stuff like these small scratches or these little clear coat imperfections or stuff like this without actually Super super cutting, but you can see how black reflective and just beautiful this paint is uh, is turning out already And I'm super excited about that because like this is actually a really good Comparison though because the tr you could not differentiate the trunk and the actual metal or earlier Not only can you now see the flake, but you can see an actual color compare like an actual color difference in the paint obviously it's very shiny now like I've gotten all the the skyline stuff, like that's all super shiny. It's almost mirror finish, but uh, I am incredibly obsessive over this sort of thing. And uh, especially with this being a giveaway car, I want to show off my maximum potential for being able to really just make this thing shine. I'm almost done with my third coat of polish, not coat, I keep saying coat, my third polish. And what I wanted to actually show you guys was something pretty cool. So obviously like this looks very shiny, but I'm gonna show you why it's important to keep on polishing after you think you might be done. So it might be hard to tell on camera, but uh, the rear quarter panel is completely finished. It's polished, uh, it's, it's got the third polish on it. This one has only been polished twice. Maybe you can see it. The the back panel has a deeper black 
than this one. So even though this one looks super shiny, you keep on getting more and more color as you uh, as you get less and less imperfections and um, as you grind down the clear coat even more. So I actually went ahead and started working on the glass a little bit to get that cleaned up, but the glass is even so bad that glass cleaner doesn't always do a job on cars that have been sitting for this long. So I'm gonna use their, their glass clay and possibly even polish the glass. That's awesome. <laughs> this is just one side of just clay. Look at that, hold on. Let's That's just, insane. Just clay, baby. That is so impressive. Three weeks later. This is 10 times the amount of work I thought this was gonna be. I am literally having to, there's like some kind of film. I don't know if it's like a paint or a clear coat or something, but last thing I would have thought was I have to spend an hour and a half on the windows of this car, claying every inch. I think you're good there. I mean, the passenger doesn't need to see out the window, just the driver. The less you see, the better. Maybe a lot more enjoyable for me. Okay, I have detailed a lot of cars in my life and never have I spent an hour or hour and a half plus on uh, claying and polishing glass. But it makes the car look much better. I was kind of tired of what, like while I was polishing, I was kind of tired of looking at the nasty glass and it makes the car look better. And I also wanted to clean the glass. I'm obviously putting liquids and stuff and it's it's draining onto the paint. I wanted to, uh, to, to do that before I did my last polish and the sealant. So we're off to the last polish. I'm going to do for my final one, I'm going to take the yellow pad. This is the softest and I'm also going to combine it with their perfecting cream. This is their least abrasive. So I am finally sealing it. All of the polishing is done. After all this time, I'm still a huge fan of wax. Um, I like ceramic coat, like a legit ceramic coat, but for one, wax is easier to install, and for two, whenever you're doing it on a rotary, it gets really evenly distributed. Uh, I like using the poly wax, and it offers similar, not as long of protection, but uh, the, it's not like hydrophobic, but it still beads water like crazy. <laughs> Dude, that is an incredible transformation, dude. Uh, you guys can't, it's so hard to see the flake, but this flake was not visible before. You could not see this, it was just hazy. This bumper be looking so nice now, man. That should be about cured, but I'm gonna wax this, put it on the car, and then let both cure, and then wipe everything off so you guys can see it. All right, you ready to see it? It turned out amazing. First off, here it was this morning, and now about eight hours of polishing later, we got it. Hi. It's pretty stellar, <laughs> dude. Here's what was really challenging about this detail. The problem was, this car has a lot of weird nooks and crannies. Like, you don't think about like, this right here, this curvature of the body was very hard to get in there and eat away that clear coat that was really stubborn without hurting more of the clear coat around here. What was really badass is how good the roof turned out. This roof, I didn't think it was gonna be salvageable. I missed a couple, missed a little stuff. You actually have a flake in the paint. All these, you got all these little imperfections that uh, that's a wet sand or a new paint job. But what's really badass is like, look, Look at that flake, dude. Hello, you can see me very nicely right now. You can see the flake, there's an actual color to it. You know, it's not just dust. Uh, a lot of really big scratches were also grinded down so you can't see most of them. Like this fender, this fender was pretty beaten up and uh, it looks incredible aside from a couple things. I'd like to get this paint code, maybe do a couple touch-ups for stuff like this. This stuff right here, definitely, I'm gonna have to get some touch-up paint or do something. I'll figure that out. Oh yeah, and you can see through the windows. So that took about an hour, hour and a half, and I did polish the windows, but I'm gonna probably do a little bit more cleaning there. The trunk was how the entire car looked. Like this was the whole, this was the paint. Like there was zero differentiation of the trunk and the quarter panels and stuff. But like you look at this, now you go over and you have this beautiful, beautiful paint. I am definitely proud 
that this turned out like this. I've got this car on the lift. I wanna do a couple things before we finish up the detail. I wanted to take the wheels off because the ones that were on it were ugly and they were just meant to be rollers. I wanted to go ahead and get some uh, heavy duty wheel cleaner and clean up the brake calipers. I've actually got coilovers on it already, but these things are gross and they suck and I prefer BCs. And uh, looking at the back, it's kind of cool. So I mean, it does have fully adjustable coilovers all the way around, which I might sell these if anybody's interested for the 32. We've also got fully adjustable upper control arms and toe arms on this thing. So I've got my little wheel brush cleaner thingy. I'm gonna go ahead and brush all these cobwebs. These are nasty, dude. Like, look at all that. Ooh. It's disgusting. Oh, he shaved this down too. He probably had some crazy wheels on it. Well, whatever. <laughs> For temporary wheels until I get my other ones in, I'm gonna use the ones that did the gender reveal burnout in. Look, this is crazy. So I sprayed the wheel cleaner on and look at all the pink coming off. It's taken all that pink off. So at least we'll have a silver wheel. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Here you go. I wanted to show you guys, I wanted to pull it out in similar lighting as it was at the beginning and show you guys the big difference while it's in the sun. Again, these are some temporary wheels. Oh, the car needs to be, needs some lower profile tires. The car needs to be lower. This, compared to how it was, you know, yesterday, pretty impressive. The roof looks really good and the windows, like again, I took, spent so much time on that. Roof is incredible. This car turned out really nicely. I'm super stoked to get a good trunk, a good hood, <laughs> obviously a motor and trans in it, which again, by the time you guys are watching this, it might be in. And I really wanna go back through and redo all of this trim. So again, the way this giveaway works is every $1 you spend, you get three entries at 5.3 Supply. You get two entries if you buy car parts with my code, or you just get one entry if you forget to use my code and you're still buying car parts. So three entries at 53supply.com, two at the parts with my code, and one without my code. So the nice thing is this time around, if you need an intake or an exhaust or something for your car, they have a huge catalog of parts on the site. So if you need any parts, intake, exhaust, whatever it is that's on there, every dollar you spend will give you either two or one entries there. And again, if you want some super comfy clothes, 53supply.com, every $1 you spend gets you three entries. This is a really great canvas to start a cool build on. So we have 45 days on this thing. The giveaway ends the April 15th. By that time, this thing is gonna look mad. It's gonna be low wheels, tires, carbon, engine, <laughs> you know, the most important part is it's going to run. <laughs> so good luck, everybody here. You can win this car and 3,000 bucks cash. Oh, let's sit in here. This thing's gonna get a nice interior overhaul. And again, the interior is pretty nice on this thing. Just needs to be now cleaned. Every video I do, I give you guys daily advice. And this is something that I have, um, this is something that I've said in the past. And I think it's really important to be constantly reminded. Each day, you have the opportunity to lay a brick. At the end of your life, you can either have a, a, a big, beautiful mansion out of these bricks, or you'll have no bricks laid at all. Whether or not you lay a brick today is your choice. Laying a brick is being productive and getting stuff done. If you choose to sit around, be lazy, and not get the work done that you need to get done, well, guess what? You're probably not gonna be laying a brick today. If you do your absolute best and you seize the day, then you'll probably lay a brick. A lot of people like to look at other people's bricks and say, oh, they've, they have more bricks than me. That's not really fair. But it kind of is at the end of the day because every day that you live, you have a choice to put a brick down or not. And so at the end of your life, are you gonna have this nice big building, this nice big beautiful building of all of this hard work that you've done? Or are you gonna sit there and be like, damn, I wish I had laid more bricks. So I just wanna encourage you guys today to, to seize the day be as productive as possible, and uh, no matter what, like if there's work to be done, do it. Don't let work or don't let life pass you by. Make sure you're just doing everything you can to be productive, and if you wanna see success, you gotta make sure you're laying a brick on that foundation today. So I will catch you guys around, I'll catch you guys later, and I'll see you guys next video. Next video, we're gonna be picking up the motor and possibly putting it in. I will. I would say that the, if not next video we're putting it in, it'll be the next video after that. So I'll catch you guys around, peace. Hey, I got two videos for you guys to watch. Make sure you watch them. Also, hit subscribe and turn those notifications on. Video notifications are key because I make beautiful videos for you.